So if you're new to color grading or using DaVinci Resolve, I'm going to be showing you some easy to follow steps on how you can start color correcting and color grading your footage. If you're not on the color page, you can come to it by clicking this color tab down here at the bottom. This will bring you to the color page. If yours looks a little bit different than mine, don't worry. From the layout here, we have all of our clips on our timeline. And if you don't see that, you just come up here to clips and you can turn that on and off right there. We have our scopes right here. If you don't see those, just make sure you have the scope icon clicked. And we're gonna be using these wheels. If you don't see that, just make sure you have this wheel icon selected. And to make things a little bit easier, we're also gonna be looping our footage. To make sure footage will be looping, just make sure this little loop icon is red. The first thing I'm gonna show you is the quick one-click way of color grading. And you can do that right here inside the color wheel section. And if you come to this little A and click that, it'll color grade automatically. You can see that the A also here on your node. And to see the difference that it made, you can hit Command or Control D and that will turn that node on and off automatically with just one click. It actually did a pretty decent job. Now to undo what I did, I can reset all the nodes by just right clicking here in the node section and selecting reset all grades and nodes. Another one click change that DaVinci has is to shot match. Maybe I want this boat clip to look like John Wick. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that I have my boat clip selected and it's highlighted red. And on the clip that I want it to look like, I'm going to hover over it and right click and come up to shot match to this clip. It does its best to try to match it, but it obviously doesn't look that good. And that's just because it is an automatic feature. So while this is great to use, we do want to be able to have full manual control of our color grading process. And that's what I'm about to get into now. Here in this clip, I have my parades open. The parades are just the red, green and blue scopes that you see here. And all you have to do is make sure that on this drop down, you have parade selected. Another thing you're going to want to make sure you have selected is up here on these three dots and display qualifier focus. What that button does is when you have your eyedropper selected, which if you don't see your eyedropper, which is also called the qualifier, it's down here on this drop down menu and just make sure that qualifier is selected and it is highlighted. Whenever you hover over anything on your preview of your clip and on the scopes, it'll have a little circle around the color values that that particular pixel that you're on has. We're gonna use that to our advantage by starting with our primaries. So the primaries are just these primary color wheels and I like to keep things organized. So this first node that's on here, I'm going to right click on it and select node label. And for this one, I'm just gonna call it primaries. And what the primaries are is going to be your lift gamma gain, but to make it make more sense, it, the lift is your shadows or your blacks, the gamma is your midtones, and the gain is your highlights or your whites. And then you also have offset, which is pretty much just the entire picture as a whole. The main focus of this is trying to make our lift, the shadows or blacks, a true black because there shouldn't be any color in it because black is the absence of color. Our gains, they should also be neutral because it is white, so there is no color as well. And then our gamma, because it is the midtones, we look for something that's gray and try to get that as neutral as possible. For our lift, we're gonna look for something in the shadows. I'm going to look at this towel. I'm gonna put that qualifier right over on the darkest part of the shadow. And as you can see at the bottom, we have the reds a little bit higher, they're lifted, and then our green and blues are sitting at the about the same spot. So what we wanna do is bring our reds down so that they're matching and everything is level on those circles. To do that, we just take our lift and we're going to move it towards the green and blues away from the reds. So that we'll lift it up and then we'll just do a slightest touch and come back and check. And we can see that it is pretty much there. And I'll zoom out. Shortcut for that is Z to fit to zoom. And I'll turn that on and off before and after. We can already see that it got rid of that red color cast. The next thing is going to be our gamma, which is our gray. So we'll look for something gray. I'm gonna look at this coffee mug right here. And it looks like the greens and blues are still the same, but this time the reds are a little bit down, so we need to lift the reds up. So we're gonna take our gamma, 
And on this white dot, we'll move it up towards the red a little bit more. Come back and check. Looks like it needs just a little bit more red. All right, and there, that is pretty good. Before and after, it's starting to look more like how it would in real life. And now for our gain, we'll go to something that's pretty white, like this tile back here. It looks like the blues are the only thing that we have to worry about. So we'll just take the white dot in the gain and move it more towards the blue. Looks like we did a little too much. We'll just bring it back a little bit. Right there's pretty good. Now that we've neutralized our lift gamma gain, you'll notice that it's still a little bit of a low contrast look. And you can also tell that by looking at our scopes because everything at the very top is going to be your highlights and everything at the very bottom is going to be your shadows. There obviously hardly is any really, really dark shadows going on. So what we're gonna do is take our lift and with this little dial down here, we're going to click and drag it towards the left, which is going to bring it down low, park it somewhere around there where it's just touching the line. And we're gonna also pull down our gamma a bit. So pull down the brightness of the midtones, but we're going to actually go in the opposite with the gain and we're going to lift that up. And what I'm actually looking at is right here where it's already clipping, that's actually this window. And that's fine that that's overexposed because it is a lot brighter outside than inside. So I'm just gonna try to look for this bright part that's already indoors and get that touching the top. Somewhere around there, before and after. If you're still having some issues with your contrast, another thing you can do is actually use this contrast tab right here. Hovering over here, you can click and drag to add more contrast or to reduce more contrast. You can see it applying it over the whole image, not just in certain areas. But if you do apply it and you notice that your highlights are getting blown out a little bit more, you can move this pivot. So if we take our pivot and move it towards the left, we're actually going to bring our shadows up, but if we do the opposite and move it towards the right, we're gonna bring our shadows down, but it helps with those highlights. However, I'm just gonna leave it how it is. So I'm going to double click pivot and double click contrast, and that's going to revert it back to the default setting. Now I'm going to move on from our primaries and we're going to work on the white balance. And to add another node, just hit Alt or Option S. That adds another node. I'm going to rename it WB for white balance. And I could just mess with the temp and tint by hand and kind of eye it. However, I'm going to actually just use this eyedropper, which is going to automatically change the white balance. So I'm gonna look for something pretty neutral. I'm gonna go for this right here, this white panel, and I'll turn that node on and off. And you can see that it toned down a lot of the red kind of going on in that area. Now that we have our white balance taken care of, I'm going to add another node. This is going to be the window. The window, is overexposed. I want to actually turn that down, but I don't want it to affect the overall image. So that's why I made it its own separate node. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm going to take the highlights here and I'm going to move that down. And you can see that's bringing a lot more of the detail back into this part of the window. However, it is lowering the highlights across everything else in the image. So what I'm gonna do is on the same node, I'm going to go to this window tab, click that here. And because of the placement of it, I'm actually going to just choose this gradient down here. And then it just adds this arrow thing. And you can kind of see that it's already affecting where one part of it is reduced highlights and the other part is the original highlights. And an easy way to see what it's actually doing is, is if you hit Shift H, it's going to turn everything that it's not affecting gray. That way we can move that over here and see exactly what we're working with. I'm going to hover over the arrow and you'll see this icon pop up and we're just going to adjust it. And the further we move this arrow out, the more of a feather you get. And the closer you bring it in, the harsher of the feather or more solid line you're going to have. So I'm gonna put it somewhere around here and I bring this back just a little bit so we're not 
having a drastic change in the highlights. And I'm gonna hit Shift H again to turn that view off. And now I will turn it on and off and you'll see that we are only affecting the window. So we're getting more definition in the window, but we're not affecting the highlights in the overall image. Another thing using windows can be great for is adding in a vignette. To do that, I'm just gonna add a new node and I'll add a circle this time, bring it out. And then I'll use this icon, rotate it. Just try to get everybody in the family in the frame. And then I'm gonna grab one of these red dots and click and drag it and that's going to feather it. So if I do that shift H again, you can see what I'm affecting here. But now I need to invert this because it's only affecting what's on the inside, but I need to affect the outside. Just come down right to where your circle is and click this button right here and that will invert it. And now we can go over here, turn off that view, and I'm going to take my lift and bring that down. So do that a little bit with the gamma and the gain. And there's the vignette, but maybe we also want to see the family pop a little bit more. To do that, you just add an outside node and you use Alter Option O, and that will make an outside node, which is essentially just an inverted version of the mask that you just made. And now what we can do with that is just get our gamma and lift it up just a little bit. And there, it pops the family a lot more. And we can turn that and the vignette off at the same time and see the difference that it makes. So this is where I would have pretty much a basic color correction. When I want to start getting creative is where I start messing with the curves. To add the curves, you actually want to do it in a different order. So you wouldn't be adding this afterwards. I'm actually going to go back and do that before we've had our vignette because everything works in a progressive way. So you'll see that the nodes are numbered one through however many nodes that you have. So the last one being affected is affecting all the nodes before it. So if you don't wanna have any weird artifacting going on when you're pushing your colors, then you wanna make sure that you're doing these in the order that they should be done in. I'm actually going to move these aside and I'm going to click Shift S and that's gonna add a node after this one, I'm gonna call this one curves. If all your nodes are a little bit messy, just right click over here and go to clean up node graph. And to get to your curves, we'll just look for this little curve icon. What you may see is this first, and this is pretty much where you do that traditional S curve, which is where you just grab a dot here, bring it up, grab a dot here, bring it down, and it just puts a little bit of pop to it. One thing I actually prefer to do for this because we do add a bunch of contrast before with our primaries is just clicking these three dots right here and coming to editable splines and turning that on and now if you just click right there you're going to see this other little icon pop up and we can drag everything up so it's a lot more gradual of an s we can also do the same at the bottom pull that down and it makes it just a lot more subtle. And we do have the highlights kind of blowing out some more. So we can always just go back in here, take our highlights, pull them back just a little bit. The other thing to get more creative is if you want to adjust the colors you have. While you do have the capability of using color boost and saturation down here, which this is what color boost looks like, and then saturation, just boost the saturation of those colors. To me, I actually prefer the look of color boost. It just looks a little bit more natural even, but this is already pretty saturated as is, and I just wanna target certain colors. And that's where these curves come into play. So back over in our curve section, if you look right next to these icons, you're going to see a hue versus hue. And this is where you can change one hue color to another. The great thing is they already have some colors picked out for you. But what I like to do is choose my own colors. So say I want this spinach right here. I want to make it pop to be more green because there is a little bit of yellow in it. So I'm just going to click and it's going to drop that color right here. And I'm going to use this hue rotation. I'm going to drag that down and that's going to add more green. Next to that, we have our hue versus sat, and that's going to increase or decrease saturation of certain things. So I'm also gonna do that with the yellows because actually, overall, there's a lot of yellow tone going on here. So I'm going to just decrease the saturation of that 
just a little bit. And now I'm also going to go over to our hue versus Luma, which is the luminance of those hues. So how bright or how dark those certain colors are. I actually want to just do an overall of the green and yellow in here just to brighten it up. I'll just click where I think I need it. And then I want to make sure that the end dots actually stay uh, neutral. So with them selected, you can just double click here on loop again, and that will set it back to one. And now we can start working with that. So you can see the spinach start to get brighter as I move it up. And then if I move this one up with avocado, fix it just a little bit. I may click and drag this out just to feather it. And now with skin tones, which is very important, you want to use a different type of scope, and that is going to be your vector scope. To get to that, we'll just come over here from our parade. We're going to select vector scope. You're going to want to make sure that you have this line. To make sure you have that, just click on this icon here and make sure that the show skin tone indicator is selected. That way you can see this. And just like before, we can hover over the skin and see if it falls along that line. And it looks like everybody's pretty much on it. Just to make it a little bit better, I'm gonna go over here into our hue versus hue. She's looking a lot more red. So I'm gonna take her skin and then I'm going to move that down just a little bit, like barely anything. I'm gonna also go to our hue versus Luma and I'll take his and I'll up the luminance. You can see that it's also affecting everybody else just a little bit, but I don't wanna go crazy because if I go too crazy, you can see that you start having this weird artifacting going on. You can also mitigate that by spreading out the selection. So just bringing that back here and then same with this one, just bringing it a little bit over here. We do want to also bring that down somewhere around there. And that just changes the overall image so much. First, we got with our primaries, made sure everything was neutral, looked like that. Then we corrected our white balance, looked like that. And then we went through our curves just to do a little bit of customization with everything. And it looks like that. And then we also added our window corrector just to add a little bit of detail back there. And we also added a vignette, and then we did a reverse the outside of that vignette and made the family pop. And that's how you do some basic color correction and color grading inside DaVinci. If you found value in this, leave a like on the video. And if there was something I didn't go over, let me know in the comments. Until next time, off we to Zine.